Okay, so uh, right now what we have is a finished hair texture for Iron View. It's pink, it's got a variations of uh, shades and colours uh, with a little bit of a hint of blue at the top. Uh, there's some uh, orange yellowish tinge in the, on the highlights in the middle. And at the bottom we have a more uh, vibrant pink which has been uh, added by just uh, transforming the, uh, the shiny areas into a tinge of red. And that was all explained in my previous uh, videos. Um, but now what we want to focus on is taking this image and making it into thousands of, or hundreds I should say, of different colours. Um, this is There's various methods to do it. And the one that I'm going to show you tends to uh, keep as much of the shine and the, uh, and the strand definition as possible without losing it. There are other methods that you would... Uh, for instance, if you just take a, um, let's see, make a new layer, fill it with a color. I mean, this method isn't the best, and you lose strand definition, so you'll see what I mean now. So if you wanted to make this red, and uh, you just turn down the opacity, you get a reddish... Uh, texture but you don't have much strand definition and you don't have much shine coming through so you've lost a lot of the uh, strand definition now I'm going to show you how you can avoid doing accomplishing well you can accomplish the same uh, thing but not lose that strand definition um, so first of all what we're going to do I mean this layer at the top you can just ignore it's just giving shadow to uh, the the top and the bottom and the middle of the uh, hair texture it's not really important you can uh, make your own one at a later stage is very easy but it does give a lot of uh, definition to the hair um, but here we go let's start with this uh, with this technique that I have it is hue saturation we go into it first from the uh, from the levels button at the bottom here and we go into the hue saturation okay now you are going to see how easy this is it is the most easiest quickest way to uh, generate hundreds of different hair textures using just one uh, tool and you will keep the uh, strand definition so let's get started all we're going to do here is we're going to take this little slider bar and slide it along as it slides along it changes various colors and as you can see the strand definition remains so let's go and take one of these well let's first of all take the original texture which is if we just put this back to zero and let's put this into iron view so you can see how it is I think I've already saved this one um, fairly certain that I have but uh, let's just do it again uh, we'll save it as pink 2 I think that is the one that I saved earlier so uh, let's just do that and we're going to bring it into iron view so you can see how it looks Okay, so that's how it looks. Various uh, shades, various strand definition, various highlights. Might be a bit back black on the back there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and change this a little bit. Um, this is my own shadow. So yeah, change this down to about 55. And let's just resave that. Okay. So here we have it's another hair texture with uh well it's the same hair texture just without so much uh emphasis on the black high uh shadow. So uh yeah it looks a lot better. As you can see we have the strand definition there which was uh rendered using a different tutorial earlier so uh, let's go back into this uh, Photoshop and I'm going to show you that hue saturation method that we were talking about so it's still in there so let's go and just randomly slide this anyway okay we've got a bluish te a bluish pink texture there well it's mainly blue but let's try and uh, make it darker we do this by just sliding the lightness you can make it bright, you can make it light. 
there we go, we've got a, bl a darker texture. Blue with highlights, a bit of a pink tinge, and uh, we just say that. And it's that easy. You can do this with uh, multiple colors. Uh, you can use, as you can see, it's exactly the same pink texture, um, except now it's blue. And uh, that is easily achieved within a few seconds of just sliding the uh, the hue uh, saturation levels along and getting the uh, color that you want. So now we've got our blue, our, our pink texture. Let's upload our blue texture. And voila, you've got a strong blue texture. It's lost none of its uh, its shine. It's lost none of its uh, shadow. And it looks great. Okay. Now, we're going to use the same method. And we're going to make it a uh, more like a fire color. So, let's go here. There we go, and let's increase increase the saturation a bit. So it makes it more red, and now the lightness. And here we go. We got like a fine. We got a reddish, orange, yellow, like a fire type of a uh, color. Uh, you can use this for maybe a ginger hair, depending on how you want to uh, market this uh, texture. Um, so let's just call this fire. And as you can see, it was just as simple and just as easy as making the pink texture. Sorry, the blue texture. So you can see the uh, the method that I'm trying to uh, show you and how powerful it can be. <laughs> There you go, you've got some nice natural looking red hair. Once again, you still got all the shine. You got all the, the strand definition. There's no uh, loss in quality of texture, just the color's been changed. Now, there's one last thing I'm going to show you here. Um, now, obviously, we've, uh, we don't, we, we've got one color, a pink color, that we are using as a base. Now, we can get various different colors, uh, a different set of colors, I should say. If we do this, if we just go and uh, merge the hue with the original texture, now we've got our original texture, the, the background texture is now the blue color. So what can we do to change that? We can go back into hue saturation and if you're paying attention, you would see now that we are getting a different colors are being rendered for different levels as they were compared to when it was on the uh, uh, on the pink texture. So if we go along, we're getting different color sets. And yeah, you can pretty much get... Okay, here's a nice uh, yellowish straw color we could use, but... Uh, I'm not going to use that one. I'm going to try something else as another example. Let's see what we can get. Here we go. We've got a nice green over here. So, but as you can see with the green, the line, the highlights is, uh, and the definition is a little bit uh, taken away because this is what I wanted to show you was with a bright color. So, now, to get some of that back, we can lower this, and we can mess around with this a little bit, just to see, okay, but also one thing is we should colorize it, uh, saturate it to the maximum, so there, there we go, we've got more definition, and we've got a... Uh, Really nice uh, green texture. There we go. <coughs> We've got. It starts off with a with a darker green, going to a bright, and then a, a, a darker shadow, going into more highlight over here. Another shadow. Another highlight. It's been lightened over here just to give it a bit more uh, depth. And at the bottom, we got more shadow and shine. So. Uh, 
There we go. Let's take this green uh, texture. Um, it could be considered a toxic texture if you want. Uh, depends on the, what you want to use it for. And we go green. Now, I'm not really the uh, the a, a texture dev as per se. Um, it's been a long time since I've actually done any texturing. So um, yeah, this these videos have been made at a request. I'm more of a mesh developer, and I will be hopefully uh, making some videos on mesh development in the next few uh, in the next few months. Uh, so. Yeah, keep tuned. If you are interested in uh, learning Mesh, subscribe. There will be videos that will show you how to do this using uh, Max 2010. Um, not all of you have Max 2010. I know it's quite expensive. Unfortunately, that is the only um, the only program I can give you assistance in. It's because the it's the only program I'm currently working with to build Mesh. Uh, there are other free programs out. Uh, Google SketchUp. Um, Blender. Um, I find that those that that Blender is not very user friendly. So uh, I'm going to be sticking to 3D Max for my tutorials. So yeah, please keep tuned in, and I will be showing you quite a lot more about uh, I'm developing over the next few months.